Welcome to New Fear Unlocked. Halloween and horror go together. It is a celebration of the macabre, whether you're going to a haunted house, dressing up as your favorite movie villain, or watching a horror movie. However, the horrors of Halloween night are all too real for some people. There are a lot of crimes committed on Halloween, and it's unclear whether or not there is an increase in crime on October 31st. However, some murders are so heinous that they left a frightening reminder of the past, and for some families, Halloween turned into a terrifying holiday. These incidents are true and all occurred on Halloween, so forget about all the spooky ghost stories and urban legends you've heard. The Man Who Killed Halloween – Poisoned Son With a Candy Timothy O'Brien, then eight years old, spent a long night trick-or-treating on Halloween in 1974 before returning to his Houston home. Sadly, one event on Halloween in 1974 happened, unlike urban tales or moral panics about poison sweets or razor blades and apples. Ronald Clark O'Brien, also known as Candyman and the Man Who Killed Halloween. Ronald, his father, handed Timothy one last piece of candy of pixie sticks, which he ate right away. The youngster started throwing up immediately and passed away on the way to the hospital. Police discovered that Ronald was accountable for his son's murder because he had cyanide poisoned the sweets after Ronald repeatedly changed his narrative. Due to his massive debt of about $100,000, O'Brien devised the heinous scheme of murdering his kid to collect the insurance money and pay off the bill. He acquired potassium cyanide, placed it inside five pixie stick straws, stapled each one, and then gave it to his son, daughter, and three other neighborhood children. As if that weren't enough, he tried killing three more children to allay his suspicions and put the blame on the neighbors. O'Brien's son Timothy wasn't as fortunate as other youngsters, including his daughter, who didn't consume the contaminated sweets. On his father's advice, Timothy ate the sweets after trick-or-treating but began violently throwing up shortly after. While traveling to the hospital, Timothy O'Brien died less than an hour after consuming the poisoned candy. Gruesome Egg-Throwing Prank On Halloween night, egg-throwing is normally a funny joke, but in 1998 it was fatal. A Bronx citizen named Carl Jackson was unaware that a dispute with jokesters may result in his death. A month before his passing, Jackson, a 21-year-old Morgan Stanley data entry worker, had just turned 21. Teenagers tossed eggs at the car of the 21-year-old Bronx resident Carl Jackson and his girlfriend as they were returning her kid from a party. Jackson exited the vehicle and yelled at the tricksters to stop. One of the teens responded by pulling a pistol, shooting Jackson once in the head. Curtis Sterling, 17, was accused of second-degree murder and illegal weapon possession. He was found guilty, and now he is doing 20 years. According to the New York Times, Jackson's mother sends him a card every Halloween that says, I'm glad you're still there. Killed him because he was scary. Japanese exchange student Yoshihiro Hattori resided in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. On Halloween night in 1992, Hattori went to a party for Japanese exchange students with the son of his host family, while dressed as John Travolta's character from the movie Saturday Night Fever in a white tuxedo. Sadly, they rang the bell at the incorrect residence. They waited a bit, but nobody replied, so they finally turned around and headed back to their car. Hattori turned around and stated, we're here for the party, before he could say anything further. Rodney Pierce, the home's owner, opened the door while brandishing a 44 Magnum. Hattori was shot in the chest and died in the ambulance while traveling to the hospital. The exchange student, according to Piers, was scary, and he worried for his life around him. Additionally, Piers said that Hattori was holding a camera that looked like a handgun and that he had instructed the young men to freeze. The story received global attention, and Piers was only detained and charged with manslaughter when the Louisiana governor and the Japanese consulate intervened. Sometimes I feel like he's still in America, Hattori's father told Japan Today in 2012. Someday he'll come back home, I think to myself. Piers was charged with manslaughter, but argued that he had the right to use fatal force to protect his property under the castle theory. Cigarette Brand Revealing the Killer Leslie Mazzara and Adrian Insogna, roommates, decided to call it a night before passing out candy on Halloween in 2004. The noises coming from above awakened Lauren Mianza, their third roommate. She silently slipped out of her room. Then she recalled there was a blood-curdling, frightened scream, followed by smashing glass and the thunderous sound of footsteps coming down the stairs from above. Lauren fled via the back door and hid in the backyard out of fear for her life. After some time, when she decided it was safe to go, 
she hurried back inside, only to see Leslie Mazzara lying face down in a pool of her blood and Ariane hiding under Leslie's bed, both of whom were still alive but were severely bleeding. Arian passed away while paramedics worked to stabilize her after Lauren dialed 911. The unidentified killer's two victims were both declared dead. When the inquiry got underway, FBI officers discovered cigarette butts nearby that had blood evidence from the residents, but no known DNA matches were located in any of the databases. Around 1,300 persons of interest were interviewed by officials, including Lily Prudhomme, a friend of Insogna, but no new clues to the investigation were found. On September 22, 2005, the police said they had established a match between blood DNA evidence from the site and cigarette butts outside. They also noted that the cigarette brand was extremely unusual, Camel Turkish Gold. The remark was made in hopes that it might inspire someone to remember a loved one who smoked that specific brand. To their amazement, Eric Koppel, now married to Adrian's friend Lily Prudhomme, turned himself in for the murders of Adrian and Sogna and Leslie Mazzara barely a week after they had issued the statement. Eric Koppel hasn't formally disclosed a motive, but he said he couldn't recall much of what transpired that night. The Toolbox Killer Based on the various tools they used to torture and murder their victims, including pliers, ice picks, and screwdrivers, two serial murderers named Lawrence Bittaker and Roy Norris are referred to as the Toolbox Killers. Shirley Ledford, 16, was their last victim. She was hitchhiking back from a Halloween party. She was picked up by the two in their vehicle, and over the next several hours, they strangled her with a wire coat hanger after gapping her, repeatedly hitting her elbow with a hammer, and sodomizing her with pliers. They fled after dropping her body in an arbitrary front yard. Later, it was discovered that they had even recorded the torture and murder of Ledford. Later, Norris was cited as saying, We've all heard women scream in horror films. Still, we know that no one is screaming. Why? simply because an actress can't produce some sounds that convince us that something vile and heinous is happening. If you ever heard that tape, there is just no possible way that you'd not begin crying and trembling. I doubt you could listen to more than a full 60 seconds of it. A serial killer cuts teen into three pieces. Like many others, American serial murderer Richard Biegenwald had a difficult upbringing. Biegenwald was abused as a child by his alcoholic father in Staten Island, New York, where he was born. He lit their house on fire when he was five years old, and by the time he was eight, he had taken up drinking and gambling. He had electroshock therapy when he was nine, and at age 11, he attempted to light himself on fire. Maria Cialella, a 17-year-old brick resident, had been out trick-or-treating on Halloween night in 1981. A patrolman last saw her traveling alone on Route 88 in the general direction of her home. He turned around to give her a ride after about 10 minutes, but she had already left. After being cut into three parts and buried in the yard of Beganwald's mother's house, Cialella's body was subsequently found. Martha Moxley died after attending a Halloween party. 15-year-old Martha Moxley left her Connecticut home the evening before Halloween in 1975 to attend a costume party. According to the New York Times, she was found dead in the backyard on Halloween morning, having been killed with a golf club. Michael Skackle, who was also 15 at the time of the murder, was found guilty of the crime and given a 20-year sentence 25 years later. He insisted on his innocence, and the Connecticut Supreme Court overturned his conviction on May 4, 2018. CNN said that the investigation into the matter was resumed in 2020. The East Coast Rapist Aaron H. Thomas perpetrated at least 54 crimes, also called the East Coast Rapist. His most recent offenses before receiving a life sentence were kidnapping three adolescent females, two of whom suffered sexual assault. Thomas kidnapped three adolescent trick-or-treaters at gunpoint, transported them to a remote location, and attempted to sexually attack the two of them there. Although one of the girls could dial 911, Thomas escaped before the police could arrive. So do you still see Halloween the same way as before? Let me know in the comments section down below. Before leaving, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications on our future content. With that being said, see you at the next one.